I am Anil Kumar and in this video I will discuss techniques involved in curve sketching. We will sketch graph of the function f of x equals to x squared times e to the power of x. So the first step is to find the derivatives, first and second derivatives and then we will analyze these to sketch this graph. f of x equals to x squared times e to the power of x the first derivative we can find using the product rule. So derivative of x square is 2x times e to the power of x plus x square times derivative of e to the power of x which is e to the power of x. Now that gives us we can take a common factor of x times e to the power of x and we get 2, I mean, let me write, no, okay, let me write 2 plus x. Okay, so that is 2 plus x. This derivative is 0 at x equals to 0 and at x equals to minus 2, right? So these are the two points where it can be 0. So let's find the values at both these points. So we'll find the value at f equals to 0 which is equal to when x is 0 it is 0 and at function at uh, minus 2 uh, let me write minus 2 here. So we'll plug in minus 2 here and calculate the value. x is minus 2. So, I'm sorry. So it is minus 2 squared is positive 4. So we have 1, let me write here, minus 2 squared times e to the power of minus 2. And that gives us 4 over e squared. Right. Uh, you could find a decimal value for this point also. 4 divided by, within brackets, e square, which is approximately 0 0.54. Okay. Now let's try to analyze the function derivative f of f dash x. So we are talking about two zeros, one at zero, the other one at minus two, right? This is zero at minus two. Let's say this is at minus two, this is at zero. So x equals to minus two and x equals to zero. So we can take a test point in the intervals from minus infinity to minus two, so it could be minus three. Here we can take minus 1 and then 1 in the interval from 0 to infinity. Now let's check the value of the first derivative in these intervals. If I write minus 3, now e to the power of x is always positive, correct? e to the power of x is always positive. We are, if I write minus 3, then minus 3 and this will be minus 1 we get a positive value. So in this interval we get a positive value. For minus 1 we have negative and positive value. So we get negative and in that interval when all are positive we will get positive value. So when derivative is positive the function is increasing. When negative it is decreasing and when positive it is increasing. So therefore we do have a relative maximum and minimum, right? So we have a maximum at minus 2. We can write this value approximately 0 0.54 and we have a minimum at 0, 0. Perfect. So that information we get from the first derivative. Now let's find the second derivative 
of the given expression. Second derivative, we'll use this equation. Let me call that as my equation number one. So we'll apply this rule twice, correct? 2x derivative is 2, so we get 2 e to the power of x plus 2x times derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x plus x squared times e to the power of x. We already found that derivative and that is x e to the power of x times 2 plus x, right? So there it is times 2 plus x. So we could write that uh, as such, then we'll factor them out. Is it okay? So we have 2x e to the power of x plus x squared e to the power of x. Now, e to the power of x, as you can see, is common. And 2x e to the power of x, we have got these two same terms. So let's factor e to the power of x. We get 2 from here. 2x e to the power of x, 2x e to the power of x makes it 4x. Let me write 4x. And then we have x squared. So that becomes a quadratic equation, which uh, can you factor? Uh, well, you can find the roots, right? So. Uh, we can use the quadratic formula to find roots of this particular equation, right? So let me rewrite this equation as e to the power of x, x squared plus 4x plus 2. Uh, so x is equal to minus b, which is minus 4, plus minus b squared, which is 16, minus 4ac, 4 times 2 is 8, square root, divided by 2a, which is 2, right? Uh, so this will give us two values, minus 4 plus minus. This is 8, right? Which could be written as 2 square root 2, divided by 2. And uh, so the exact value is minus 2, dividing both by 2, right? Plus minus square root 2. Is it okay? So that gives you two values. Decimal will be good for us to plot. So we'll do square root 2. And from there we'll take away uh, 2. We get one value. In decimals it is minus 0 0.58. 5, let us say. We could say 7. It doesn't matter. So that is to say we'll just add 2 and square root 2. Uh, decimal value is 3.41 but with negative sign 3.41 since both negatives we are adding okay so these are the two points where we could have point of inflection correct uh, now at these values we can also calculate the value of the function so we'll do that so let's first uh, analyze the point of inflection Okay, so let's do this space. So we are talking about, uh, uh, let's say, right. So we have minus 0 0.58 and minus uh, 3.4. Now for this, let's take test points as both are negative. So we could take a test point as minus 1, minus 4, and let's say 0. And we are analyzing the second derivative. Correct. So as you can see, this quadratic expression could be positive or negative. e to the power of x, you know, is always positive, right? Now, I could actually sketch the graph and then since x squared is positive, so the graph will be kind of like this. Do you see that? So even without placing the values calculating, we can clearly see that 
The second derivative is positive in the interval from minus infinity to minus 3, negative in the interval from minus 4, I mean minus 3.4 to minus 0 0.5, and then again it is positive, right? So that really means that the concavity of the graph is going to be kind of like this, concave up, then it will be concave down, and then again concave up. And that leads to two point of inflections. Point of inflection at minus 2 minus square root 2 and point of inflection at minus 2 plus square root 2. Correct? Now, we can also find the value at these points. Let's use the calculator once again to calculate the value of the function so that we can plot it. Correct? So, so if I check these values, what is f of minus 3.41, let's say, we can use the calculator. So we get x is minus 3.41, minus 3.41, okay, square, times e to the power of minus 3.41. 3.41 and that gives us a value of 0 0.38. So this is 0 0.38. The next value is minus 0 0.59. Let me write. Okay. Okay, so we'll change this. 0 0.5857. How does it matter? Okay and uh, 0 0.5857 okay, this is we get 0 0.19 0 0.19 for minus 0 0.58 let's say right so we have two point of inflections and based on the information which we have now, we can actually plot the curve. Uh, so I'll make a small sketch here. It seems that the function is always positive, correct? x squared is always positive, e to the power of x is also positive. It is always positive, so the minimum which we have, 0, 0, is actually the absolute minimum for the function right so since we have a minimum at 0 a point of inflection as 0.58 so we could is concave up right so so this part of the curve is kind of like this without getting into the scale and here is the point of inflection which we are referring to at minus this is let's say minus 0 0.5 is it okay so that really means that the concavity changes. So let's emphasize on the graph quality, right? This, and again we have that point of inflection at uh, minus three point four. The concavity again changes, right? And uh, we should have checked one more feature. Uh, that is, we'll just talk about what happens when x is very large negative value right so so if x is very large let me do that now if x is very large negative value then it is approaching zero right since both these factors are decreasing y is approaching zero from a positive side is it okay that's a very uh, important feature which uh, we kind of missed in the beginning so after this point of inflection, the curve kind of like though goes like this. So that becomes the graph of the given function. And we already have these, these values. This is slightly higher than that, right? So this value is uh, 0.19. The other value for us is 0.38. And the maximum which we found 
was was at minus 2 we calculate 0 0.5 this value is the maximum so this value is 0 0.5 correct so that gives a fairly good graph very accurate so if you use a real graph paper to sketch you can get much much better result so we use the minimum which is absolute minimum we have here local maximum and then these are the two points of inflections and we also note that the function actually has a horizontal asymptote uh, since as x approaches minus infinity y approaches zero right so whenever you have an exponential function it is very critical to find the derivatives analyze them so that you get correct local maximum minimum and point of inflections to sketch i hope that really helps feel free to subscribe to my videos write comments and share your questions thank you and all the best